Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm gonna to explain the math that you need to know for machine learning. Now, number one is linear algebra. Linear algebra is one of the first courses you'll take in university. So if you do a math-like degree, engineering as well, you will probably start off with one linear algebra course, and depending on what you may do, you may have uh, one or two more than that. Most importantly, you will study the ideas of vectors and matrices. A vector will probably be on the first page, if not the second one. Basically, it is a bunch of numbers put together. That's not the definition that physics people would say, the, at least the high school physics one, is that a vector has a magnitude and a direction. That's true, it's going a particular direction, and it's basically going a particular distance or speed or whatever you want to think about it in that direction. But honestly, in math, we just think about these things as points. Because if you put a point somewhere in, say, three-dimensional space, yeah, you can draw a vector to that point, and there you go. A point and a vector are pretty much the same thing. It's just a bunch of coordinates saying where something is. Now, a matrix is something, basically, just multiple of those vectors. A bunch of numbers, and then a bunch of numbers, a bunch of numbers. So honestly, Vectors and matrices, they might have fancy terms that might seem complicated, but it's just a way of storing multiple information. And they have a strong, strong relation to machine learning for many reasons. Uh, most probably broadly is because machine learning often involves parallel tasks. You're doing multiple things at the same time. You're calculating multiple values uh, kind of at the same time. And you can use computers and parallel computing to do that. Linear algebra and basically vector and matrix multiplication and things I'm not going to talk about are really just ways of doing multiple things generally in a linear way at the same time. So you're multiplying a bunch of things and summing them kind of at the same time. If that didn't make sense, well, go take linear algebra. How I learned this is through university and a little bit of stuff on the side. How most people learn it is definitely university. However, there is definitely some courses, which I'll link everything in the description down below on where you can learn linear algebra. There's also just textbooks, like you can grab the textbooks that people use in university classes and read those. Some of them are very, very techy. Some of them are are a little looser and allow you to have a little bit of fun with it, but not too much fun. It's a, it's a tricky area. Number two is uh, calculus. Now, for those that are like straight up mathematicians reading this, the difference between calculus and linear algebra starts to seem a lot more like they're just exactly the same thing as you get further into combining them. Uh, it's kind of just an arbitrary thought of actually separating these pieces of mathematics because it's really just a bunch of rules. But once you go into the multivariable, as in doing multiple things, yeah, it, it starts to be pretty similar. But uh, essentially the reason that you need to learn calculus from machine learning is because there is this very simple, honestly not too bad concept at all called gradient descent. Descent means going down, so optimizing something, and gradient is a derivative. Calculus is basically the study of derivatives. Um, single variable calculus is kind of the study of one derivative. Um, multivariable calculus is the study of many derivatives. That's not quite true. Of course, there's a lot more going on there. Uh, but from especially a machine learning point of view, you'll start to see that it kind of feels that way. Combining linear algebra, which is just doing linear operations, and machine learning is often a linear operation, a linear regression is a linear function. Um, and even when it gets kind of more nonlinear, there's still technicalities of why it's kind of still linear anyway. And then calculus, you can kind of start to optimize these functions as well. The pair of them, linear algebra, number crunching, doing various tricks and making functions, calculus, kind of getting derivatives of these functions. You have to learn them both. Number three is probability and statistics. It's not as closely associated with the other two as they are. Kind of linear algebra and calculus are sort of kind of the study of the same thing. Probability and statistics are not. There's many engineers and people that go through a lot of uh, calculus-like stuff. Linear algebra for engineers usually, which means application-based often. Probability and statistics, a completely different thing. Uh, there might be some engineering courses where you do really into the probability. It depends on what you do. For mathematicians and obviously statisticians, uh, you can get really, really into statistics, which not a lot of people know. So this is where the, you really start to stand out as you start to learn this mathematics, because actually having a firm grasp of probability, not just being able to read these probability laws and sort of understand them, if you could actually get to the point where they just seem like common sense, that's a great. And it might take multiple, multiple courses to do that. Uh, there's many different fields of statistics that you can look into. The first one you'll probably see is confidence intervals and hyper 
hypothesis testing, which is very, very useful stuff. It's all the way up until whatever job that you want. Knowing and actually memorizing as much as you can about these different hypothesis tests is actually quite useful. If you don't know what that is, basically you're just kind of testing a hypothesis. You're getting data and using laws about mathematics that you know about something to make an informed guess as, as to what something is, or maybe say an average is roughly, you'd expect it to be roughly 2.2, and you can say that with 95% certainty that it actually is 2.2. Why don't you know exactly what it is? Well, because you can never have all the data. You can never trust that all of your data is right. Probability and statistics has a lot to do with machine learning, uh, largely because as you make these machine learning functions, they are probabilistic models, as you may have heard. And so these hallucinations, generative AI's hallucinations, it's saying the wrong thing. Why is it doing that? Uh, well, part of the reason is because it's using these probabilistic models. The people that created the algorithms don't actually know all of the possible things that it could produce. At least, I mean, it could produce just about anything. And so maybe 99% of the time, it's going to say something right. Uh, but 1% of the time, it's going to be a little bit off. And so you can use mathematics to form your problems, form the ways you solve those problems, uh, and how you think about their shortcomings as well. Uh, and there's a lot of different probability distributions that you can look at. If you take a probability course, you'll see something like binomial, uh, Gaussian for sure, like the normal distribution, Poisson distribution. There's a lot of different ones. You can get a lot into different areas as well. Uh, like Markov chains is actually really, really cool. It's actually, I think, the first video on my channel. A fun fact, if you want to look for it, I made a video that was like the most awesome explanation of Markov chains. It's really not, but it's it's okay if you want to look at it. So that's number number three, probability and statistics, seeing how things are kind of random, stochasticity, yeah, as you'll hear in statistics, and random basically mean the same thing. Probability is the study of kind of measuring measuring that randomness and doing things with it. Number four is closely associated with, associated with calculus, um, but straight up optimization. Now there is, uh, if you go into a university, you'll see that there is kind of a major often, or at least many courses that you can do in something called optimization. And it's the study of optimizing functions. Okay, so in calculus or linear algebra or even probability and statistics, you can have these, you can generate these functions. And often what you want to do is uh, minimize or maximize those functions with respect to something, with respect to some measure of goodness or some measure of badness. If you're measuring badness in a function, well, then you want to minimize, you want, you want to have the least amount of bad in your model possible. If you're saying something good, accuracy, you would want to learn how to mac maximize that accuracy. And there's a lot of uh, numerical methods, which is basically its own piece of that is understanding what numerical methods are of solving those problems iteratively. So basically, you get a solution, you get closer, you get closer, you get closer. Uh, gradient descent is one of those things, you're minimizing a function iteratively. Uh, and so again, optimization is closely associated with calculus and linear algebra, but it's uh, more so there's a lot of particular things. And especially if you go into this discrete world of it, uh, that you can do an optimization, that's pretty unique, actually. And uh, it's not maybe the most important one, I wouldn't spend all your time here, but I would spend a little bit to make sure that you have the base terms of it understood, uh, like why you're optimizing things, what you're optimizing, uh, and a couple of different ways of how to do that would be quite useful for sure. And if you want to get into the machine learning research, uh, it's definitely one way to stand out is to be a great mathematician in the areas of optimization. There's many optimization formulas that are being created all the time. And it's just going to help if you force yourself to learn through that stuff, because that's a lot of what machine learning really is for the people that uh, don't just implement it for the people that are creating it. It's a lot of that. Number five, which is closely associated with the latter, but it's its own unique thing, is graph theory. Ignoring the kind of base mathematics that you might learn in graph theory, it's actually getting very used in, like, practically right now in machine learning. You may see, like, graph based machine learning. That's the kind of graph that we're talking about, not the kind of graph that is, like, as I said, you could plot a vector or something, a point on a set of axes, whether it's two axes or three or four or whatever it may be. I know it's hard to visualize, but uh, you can still kind of do that. At least you can do it in, in theory. Graph theory is kind of its own thing. You may have seen something called the traveling salesman problem. That is basically a huge graph, and there's a lot of stuff going on in that. It's definitely not going to get into that today. But it can be very useful today because there's a lot of applications, or at least there's a lot of things in the world that can be modeled as a graph, like say using Google Maps, going to different spots, using the roads. That can definitely be thought of as the roads are edges or the pathways are edges and uh, the destinations are nodes. There's a lot of other things going on, transactions in the world, social networks that are modeled in computer science 
as graphs than not, not the axis graph, but this type of graph. You can often use machine learning nowadays, at least it's getting more popular to analyze and perform different optimization methods on these graphs. So it's really cool. You can also just kind of use them as input for other stuff. I would recommend learning getting into it. If again, you are trying to stand out from the crowd, uh, getting somewhere deep into graph theory and then graph based machine learning is something where you could absolutely stand out right now and be very helpful at the top companies and others. Number six is not really considered a math, but it should be just based computing what it means to do computing how we do it how we code I would use Python learn about Python and coding and then I would start getting into this stuff I hope this video was helpful have a great day guys see you later